live free or die hard. Now this time around, a cyber terrorist hacks into the FBI building and the FBI wants John McClane to find a hacker to help fix the problem. Now this is my favorite sequel to Die Hard because it goes into the person of John McClane rather, rather than hero. Now for me in this movie I saw John McClane as depressed. And you figure out why he's depressed in this movie because as a hero you think you get all the glory, you get, get, you get all the fame, but you actually don't. You really sacrifice a lot to be a hero, and you see why. And you see why in this movie that he's divorced, his kids don't want to talk to him, and the fact that he's in alone. So you ha you pay a price for being a hero, and it shows that even though you're a hero, it's not what it's cracked up to be. Simple as that. And what I like about Liffrey and Die Hard is that it plays the fact that he's old in the digital age. And last time we seen John McClane, he. Last time you see John McClane is about 12 years ago, since the last movie. Because the last movie came out in 1995, and this is 2007. So it's a full 12 years since we've seen John McClane. He's about 50 years old, so he's really old. And they made fun of, they made fun of his old age throughout the whole entire movie. There's this line that Tim Lee Olenfant says that, you're a Timex watch and a digital age. I thought that was so clever because it's true. Because John McClane wasn't really technological sound throughout the whole Die Hard movies or throughout the whole Die Hard franchise. Even from Die Hard 2, he didn't like the pager. He hated beepers, he hated cell phones, he hated everything that involves technology. So he wasn't really a gadget oriented or a technologically oriented type of person. He just did old school stuff to get the job done. Now, and that's why they had Tim, and that's why they had Justin Long character be somewhat of, a, somewhat of a nerd to help him out. And he was good throughout the whole entire movie from being that comic relief to help John McClane out throughout the whole entire movie. And I always said that Alan Rickman, nobody's touching Alan Rickman's performance in the Die Hard movie. But Timothy Oliphant's performance in this movie rivals Hans Gruber's or Alan Rickman's performance in Die Hard. He, it was, he was just that good in the movie. So Timothy Oliphant gave his character personality along with Alan Rickman. So that's why I say that his character comes close to rivaling uh, Alan Rickman's performance in Die Hard. I'm not saying he's better, but it comes close to it. Now, Lynn Wiseman was a big fan of Die Hard and shows in this movie. Because from beginning to end, you can tell this is one of the most grittiest Die Hard movies we've seen yet, in, at least in my opinion. Because it's hardcore action. And it's the fact that it's in your face from beginning to end. Just like Die Hard, the first one. Die Hard had plenty of action that was just in your face from beginning to end. John McTiernan, you know how I directed, uh, John McTiernan, who directed the first movie and the third movie, was just like that. And he knew how to direct action. Same thing with Lynn Wiseman. He, do, he knew how to direct action in this movie because he was a big fan of Die Hard. And it just shows that he paid tribute to Die Hard in this movie. Now, personally for me, I have no problems with this movie. I loved it from beginning to end. Now, I have a gripe with fans of this movie that people complain about. Now, people complain about that John McClane doesn't jump on an F-22 fighter jet. I said, really? Really? This movie is in the digital age, so you have to jump up the action a little bit. Now, if you don't like it, so what? For me, I thought it made the movie even more better. Because if you didn't like people thought that him jumping on an F-22 fighter jet was it unreal? It's an action movie. Get over it. It's an action movie because think about it. In every action movie that you do, you have to up the ante every scene or every movie that you do. You can't just do the same thing over and over again. If you ain't like the F-22 uh, scene, then watch the original Die Hard where it doesn't have an F-22 scene in it. And when I look at this, when I look at Live Free at Hard, it's a old school versus new school. John McClane uses old school tactics, old school tactics to get the job done. He uses anything at his disposal. If it's new school, old school, he just uses anything to get the job done. That's what Dahar is all about. So if you want to use a fire jet to get to where he needs to go, then fine, let it be. If you don't like the F-22 pilot jet, then watch Dahar 1, 2, and 3 where it doesn't have fighter jets in it. For me personally, I have no problem with it. It just made the movie actually better. And suspend belief when it comes to that part because really, really, come on. I mean, with every action movie, you have to make it the action scenes more better in some movie, in some action movies. So, like I said before, it just added to the movie, make the movie more better. So, with that being said, live free or die hard. 
is a very action-paced movie and more grittier than any other any of the sequels to Die Hard. Live Free Die Hard gets for me four and a half out of five stars. Loved it. It's the most grittiest of the sequels. So if you like this video, please rate, comment, subscribe, and until next time, Movie Nation.